Los Angeles County is the largest voting jurisdiction in the nation, with more than 5.8 million registered voters across 4,100 square miles. The Registrar Recorder County Clerk is the department responsible for conducting federal, state, local, and special elections, and it is our mission to continuously provide voters with a convenient, accessible, and secure voting experience. In 2020, the Registrar Recorder County Clerk implemented the county's new voting system, Voting Solutions for All People, and adopted the California Voters' Choice Act, which provides voters with expanded options, time, and accessibility to make their voices heard in a modern and secure manner. As an election worker, you play a critical role in providing a positive experience to all voters and to provide assistance to voters who may need help using the new voting equipment at the vote center. In Los Angeles County, it is estimated that 20% of the population identifies as having a disability. As an election worker, it's important that you are prepared and know how to help a voter who may identify as having a disability so they can accessibly and independently participate in the electoral process. The question is, will you know what to do? To give you a better understanding, we interviewed voters with various disabilities to find out firsthand what their needs are. The whole idea is dignity. As a person with a disability, it's important that people understand we want to be treated with dignity and respect. I've had experiences where the election workers have put me to the side until they've had time to help me. We don't like it when we're defined by our disability. I'm not a person who is blind, I'm just a person who has difficulty seeing. Another time, the election workers all huddled together and had a meeting to decide what to do with me. They didn't understand that a person can be disabled without any physical signs. This is demeaning and embarrassing. Let's look at a few simple steps you can take to ensure voters with a disability have a positive voting experience. When communicating with voters, you should always keep it simple and polite. When in doubt, leave it out. Take any reference to a disability out of your dialogue. For example, you would say, this person needs assistance using the voting booth, also called ballot marking device or BMD. In this example, there is no reference to a disability and you don't run the risk of offending anyone. It's simple and polite. When in doubt, leave it out. One of your most important responsibilities as an election worker will be to greet and assist voters as they approach the vote center. The voting experience is still relatively new to voters and they may need your assistance. When a voter approaches the check-in table, you should give them this official greeting. Hello, let us know if you need any assistance today. This greeting should be used for all voters, not just for voters with disabilities. This is important because it's our goal to treat everyone the same. We don't want to embarrass anyone by singling them out. After greeting the voter, you should ask if they are comfortable voting on the equipment or if they would like assistance. In most cases, voters are comfortable using the ballot marking device on their own. However, some voters may need assistance or guidance. If a voter declares that they need help or will have some difficulty using the equipment, you should guide the voter to an available ballot marking device and explain how to use the BMD, including how to change display settings or how to use the control keypad and headphones to review their ballot and mark their selections. Stay calm if a person with a disability enters the vote center. Don't start huddling or having meetings in front of the voters. This is very demeaning. Don't put the person with a disability in the corner or off to the side until you can get to them. Take care of them like any other voter. If you're unsure how to assist a voter, ask for help from your vote center leads. Everybody likes dogs, but when a person shows up with a service animal, dog is working so it shouldn't be distracted or petted. Also, I don't know why people have to shout at us we have a visual disability, but we can hear just fine. How do you handle a voter who has limited vision or is blind with a service animal? Like every other voter, with dignity and respect. 
In the following scene, we see how an election worker greets and assists a voter who is blind or has limited vision. Hi, how can I assist you today? Hi, I'm here to vote. I'll be looking up your voter record. Let me know if you need any assistance. I'll be able to help you. Yes, can you guide my hand to where I need to sign because I'm visually impaired? Now I'll give you the stylus and all you have to do is sign and then I'll guide your hand to the screen as well. Can I be of any assistance? Yes, I'm not familiar with the new voting device. Can you help me? I can assist you at the voting booth. Thank you. The ballot marking device is directly in front of you. There are several options that you can use to change the screen contrast and the text size. Or you can also navigate the ballot using the control pad and the audio headset. Which option would you like to use? I would like to use the audio headset and control pad to fill out my ballot. I've never used it before. Okay, now I'm going to put the headphones on you and also direct you on how to put the ballot into the ballot marking device, okay? Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, you. now you can put the ballot to your right. Yes, just fill, fill along. Oh. There you go. Thank you. Now if you can reach out in front of you, the control pad is directly in front of you. There you go. Great, if you need any assistance, I'm here to assist you in anything. And once you're done, I will have your assistant come and help you and also guide you to get your I Voted sticker once you're done. Thank you. You're welcome. The election worker did a nice job of assisting the voter. He began by giving the voter the official greeting. Hello, let us know if you need any assistance today. After the voter told the worker that she would need assistance, the worker offered her the available options on the ballot marking device, the display settings or the audio headset and control pad. Now the worker also did some very subtle things that you may or may not have noticed. First, the election worker talked directly to the voter in a normal voice and the worker did not touch or attempt to distract the service animal. Second, the election worker did not grab or pull on the voter's hand. Instead, they guided the voter's hand to the signature pad. When it came time for the worker to assist the voter, the worker communicated with the calm voice exactly what he was about to do and asked the voter if he could guide her to the BMD. In this case, the voter had an assistant help her to the BMD. When it came time to vote, the worker explained the options available to the voter and explained how it worked. It's important to note that our election worker made certain that the ballot was properly cast into the ballot box located in the back of the ballot marking device. Our election worker also asked the voter if she needed assistance to the exit. This is an important and kind gesture to ensure the voter safely exits the building. We understand that people are just trying to be helpful, but we don't want our arms pulled, or our canes grabbed. All I need is for them to offer their arm, and then I can take it and follow. We're not children. We want to place the ballot in the ballot box ourselves as long as we know where it is. At one time, at a polling place, I had to wait over an hour. The election workers put me to the side and made me wait until they finished assisting other voters. Not all voters who may need assistance will have a visible disability. In some cases, you may need to assist a voter whose disability is visible or someone who has a hidden disability. These are disabilities that we can't see but will affect someone's ability to go through the voting process. It's important to remember that a vote center could become quite busy and voters could spend more time standing in line than actually voting. Therefore, people with visible or hidden disabilities might need some assistance even before they reach the voting booth. Remember to use the official greeting to address voters while they wait in line. Hello, let us know if you need any assistance today. This lets voters know that if they need any kind of help, you are available. Let's take a look at what to do when you encounter a voter with a hidden disability. Hello, let us know if you need any assistance today. We're here to help. Yes, I think I need some assistance. I'm having a hard time standing. Yes, no problem. I have a chair right here you could use. The key is to never assume. Although voters may not appear to need assistance, someone may have a hidden disability. 
It's your responsibility to let voters know that you're there to help. Be observant. If you're not currently helping someone, then stop what you're doing and direct your attention to the voter so they can let you know if they need extra help. There could also be a circumstance where a voter has difficulty speaking or communicating. As we mentioned before, it's your responsibility to let voters know that you are there to help. A voter might bring an assistive device such as a communication board, so be observant as to what communication tool the voter might already have. You can also ask them to write on a piece of paper to communicate with you. The key is to be patient and not to rush them. This next scene shows you how to handle that. Hello, how may I assist you today? This is my first time using the Levine booth. Uh, excuse me? This is my first time using the new device. I apologize, but I'm having a hard time understanding what you're saying. Could you please write on this pad of paper? Okay, so this is your first time using the new voting device. Uh, well, it's easy. First, could you write your name and address on this pad of paper so I could look up your voter record on the e poll book? After that, I'll print you out a blank ballot that corresponds to your ballot group, and then I could take you and assist you at any available voting booth. Explain to the voter to insert the ballot to their right and follow the instructions on the screen. It will guide them through the various candidates and measures they are eligible to vote on. It is important to inform them that once they have made their selections, they can review them on the screen, and if they do not have any changes, they will then print the ballot to physically review before casting it. When they are ready to cast their votes, they will reinsert the ballot back into the device and hit the Cast Your Ballot button on the screen. The ballot marking device then drops their ballot into the ballot box located on the back. Let them know if they have any questions, you are here to help. This type of situation can catch you by surprise because the disability doesn't present itself until you interact with the voter. Be patient and direct with the voter, assuring them that you're there to help and that you're having difficulty understanding. Ask them to repeat if needed. The important thing to keep in mind is that the election worker told the voter that he was having difficulty understanding him and asked him to write his name on a piece of paper. This is absolutely the right way to handle this situation. Use of communication tools and having a pen and paper handy is key to assisting a voter with difficulty speaking. I understand that people want to help me, but I see that they get nervous and frustrated when they have to deal with me. They don't want to offend me, as they don't know the best way to help me. But as long as the person is trying to help and willing to take a few extra minutes to communicate with pen and paper, I'm fine. I try to be as independent as possible, so I don't need much assistance. Like someone who has a hidden disability, you may not be able to tell if a person has a hearing impairment until you start to communicate with them. The voter may have limited or no ability to hear what you're saying. So, like the hidden disability example, be observant to any communication device the voter might have and always have your pad of paper and pen available. Let's see how our election worker assists a voter with limited hearing. Hello, let us know if you need any assistance voting today. I'd like to vote today, but I can't hear. We offer ASL interpretation video conference services to assist you with the voting process and connect the voter with an interpreter so they can show them how to use the ballot marking device and cast their ballot. Can I have an ASL interpreter, please? Okay, they're here ready for you. In this scenario, once the election worker realized the voter could not hear, he started writing on a pad to effectively communicate to the voter that ASL video conferencing services are offered at the vote centers. This service makes it easier for election workers to provide assistance in sign language to deaf or hard of hearing voters on every step of the voting process. Also, the worker talked directly to the voter so his lips could be read and he spoke in his normal tone. 
Remember that waving your hand or giving a light tap on the shoulder to get a voter's attention is perfectly acceptable. It is also helpful to speak at a normal pace and be more pronounced when speaking to the voter. Here is a list of the key points to remember when you begin assisting voters with disabilities that are not noticeable. Be polite, direct, and patient. Be observant. Check for any assistive communication devices the voter might have. Have a pen and pad of paper ready to facilitate communication. Have helpful instructional voting materials handy. Maintain eye contact so the voter can read your lips. If you need assistance helping a voter with a disability, ask your vote center lead for assistance. Do not keep the voter waiting. One of the problems are that people see that I have a physical disability and assume that I have a mental disability as well. You should never assume. A voter who uses a mobility device such as a wheelchair, cane, or crutches may have an injury or a physical disability. However, you should never assume that they need assistance. It's important to many voters who have a physical disability to be independent. Some of those voters only need to know that the ballot marking device can be adjusted to a mobility device position or that they can sit while voting. Therefore, using the official greeting is important because it lets the voter know that there are options available without you having to guess whether they need help or not. Let's see how the official greeting works for a voter with a physical disability. Hi, let us know if you need any assistance today. I think I'm going to need some help voting. Do you have an accessible voting booth where I can sit down? Yes, we do. Actually, all of our devices are accessible and they can be adjusted to a comfortable position for you to make your selections on the touchscreen. We also have the audio headset and the control pad if you want to use those instead of the touchscreen. Which option would you like to use? Can you assist me using the touchscreen? Sure, I can help you. It turned out that the voter wanted to use the touch screen with some assistance to insert and navigate the ballot. The law says that a voter can have anyone help them vote, even a non-registered voter, as long as the person helping is not their employer or an agent of their employer or an officer or agent of the union they belong to. The assistant cannot divulge any information regarding the selections made by the voter on the ballot. I remember an election worker tried to help me vote. I wanted to vote for one candidate, and the person helping me said, I really don't think that's a good choice. You should vote for the other candidate. I couldn't believe it. Also, it is important to remember you must always stay neutral and never give your opinion on how to vote, even when helping the voter. When we're voting, don't take our materials away from us. We're not children. Let us use the machine and insert the ballot in the box by ourselves. If a voter is using a mobility device, it is critical that you do not grab or lean on that device. Consider that mobility device as a part of their personal space and respect that space. Also, never start pushing the mobility device unless the person asks for it or gives you permission to do so. All voters going to vote should be treated with respect and provided the same experience. Never assume that a person with a disability will need assistance to vote. Simply give all voters the available voting options they have and let them decide. Never keep any voter waiting or pull a voter to the side to assist other voters first. If you are not sure how to assist a voter, ask for help from your vote center leads. Los Angeles County is committed to providing a positive experience to all voters who visit a vote center, even if that person cannot leave their vehicle. Therefore, the Registrar Recorder County Clerk is continuing to offer curbside voting. This preference allows voters to make their selections from the comfort of their own vehicle. It does take a bit longer to accommodate, but it is available to anyone who requests it. Let's watch how our vote center worker handles curbside voting. Oh, there's the number for the curbside voting. I'm going to call.
Hello, this is the VAAC site. How can I assist you? Hi, I'm going to have a little trouble getting into the building. Do you think you can help me? Yes, we offer curbside voting. I can come out there and assist you. Is that something you'd be interested in? Yes, thank you. Hi, please fill out the Certification of Voters with Disability card and then I will take that into the vote center and have a check-in clerk pull up your information and print out your ballot. There are a few details you need to remember when using curbside voting. Have the voter complete the Certification of Voters with Disabilities card so the check-in clerk can look up their record. Then, take the voting materials to the curbside. It is important to remind voters that the new curbside voting process allows them to create a poll pass, which is a QR code that contains the voter selections. The election workers take the poll pass and scan that code on the ballot marking device and print their ballot for the voter to review. The voter may want someone else to assist them during curbside voting. As discussed earlier, this is acceptable, but you'll have to confirm that the assistant is not the employer or an agent of the employer of the voter or a member of the union board the voter belongs to. The assistant does not have to be a registered voter and the assistant cannot divulge how they voted. If you need assistance, call the Election Worker Services hotline and somebody can walk you through what needs to be done for curbside voting. Well, we've covered a lot of ground, so let's briefly review what you need to know. First and foremost, voters with disabilities want to be treated with dignity and respect, and that starts with how you interact and communicate with them. When in doubt, leave it out. Do not make any reference to a disability. Use the official greeting to all voters. Hello, let us know if you need any assistance today. Not just the voters you think might need additional assistance. Using this greeting will prevent you from singling anyone out or making incorrect assumptions about that person's needs. This way, any voter with hidden disabilities can make themselves known. After you have greeted a voter and they let you know they need assistance, you should explain the many new features available to the voter on the ballot marking device and how the new experience provides voters with greater accessibility to customize voting to meet their needs. Respect voters' personal space. Voters who are blind or low vision or using a mobility device may not want to be touched or have their service animal distracted. A pen and paper are effective tools when communicating with voters who may be deaf, hard of hearing, or have difficulty speaking. Finally, if you have any questions or doubts, call the election worker hotline and a county representative will help you. The Los Angeles County Registrar Recorder County Clerk thanks you for taking the time to watch this video to improve the voting experience for all voters. Visit www.lavote.net or call 1-800-815-2666, option 3, for more information on voting accessibility.